I want to talk to you on the subject of developing a winning culture for a winning church. Um, the topic is going to come up on the screen just now. I'm talking on the subject developing a winning culture for a winning church. And we're going to explain to you what we mean. It becomes incumbent upon a leader to define the spirit of a church or of an organization whether in business or in a church, to define the spirit of an organization, a home. It becomes incumbent upon parents to define how they want their children to be raised. To make an example, but like I figure late in a kumbulu bane kumbulale, mama no baba bati, mom to anala inclina, a figure later, glalong a pandla. They're defining a culture like I. They're defining how children need to behave and everything else. And there's a business person, you might have a culture and the business. When I'm talking about culture, I'm not talking necessarily about uh, the cultural norms just now uh, based on our ethnicity. I'm talking about the way of doing things. Say, tell your neighbor, way of doing things. We're talking about the way of doing things, how things need to be done, how things ought to be done. So it's very critical for us to understand that um, it needs to explain how things need to be done in a church. Now, sometimes before we, we can leap into the topic, we need to define what we mean by certain words. We need to define. So you, I'm going to have you to take this definition down about culture. The word culture comes from the Latin word color, which means C-O-L-O-R-E, which means to till or to cultivate. It refers not only to tilling the soil, but also the mind, the heart, and the emotions. So you till the mind, the hearts, and the emotions. You work at it. You till it because you want to sow a seed into it, a proper seed, so that one power is cooler, right? And uh, it, in the broader sense, culture may be defined as the total pattern of human behavior, a total of human behavior and its products, which means, and its products, because they're products to it. I'm not coming, the human behavior has got products to it. Make an example, for an example, let's say we are a church and I sent to any, let's say, um, um, the gossip, like something, a lot of, but its products is that Abanba corner, they may be thinking maybe this is not the right church for me because when it be human behavior, a culture it is your clever band, and therefore, then they end up, you know, not liking what is going on in the church and thinking tough, which is the right church for me. Tina Spies is a Shumaila, Pabanba, and Gena, Lababasheba, or Babalimas. So, for you to change that, you need to change your culture. You can't keep on talking to the victims. Uh, the victim is your culture. We must deal with the culture because courage means you must deal with it. You must deal with the very thing that causes that. It's human behavior. I'm talking about what do we mean by culture? Okay, for today. Okay, so 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 culture is embedded, if you would, in human behavior in its products. Let me explain that in detail, and then there's one is something in the Bible. Um, yeah, these notes I'm looking for. No, that one. Okay, it says here, okay, my notes say, the pattern of, uh, the, the total pattern of human behavior and its products embodied, which means it's carried through, embodied in thought, speech, action, and artifacts, and, and dependent upon man's capacity for learning and transmitting knowledge to succeeding generations through the use of tools, languages, uh, systems, or, up, or abstract thoughts. Okay, Nyaz, it's a long definition, but at the end of the day, it, what it does is that the culture bantabanayo is embodied through Thoughts, species, and actions. So you want to change culture. If you want to change a culture, then if you want to keep people, you must create a culture that makes sure that people are kept. If you want to raise a church that's strong, you must create a culture that makes sure that people can be, can be strengthened. It's incumbent upon the leader to make sure that you gauge the culture of your congregation. So that all each, uh, in your business, in you could say, because many people, they say, um, other people call it ethos. The higher you go, the more you study um, systems of organizations or an MBA course, they call it an ethos of organization. The ethos comes from the word ethical values. Okay, the ethical values would deal with, for an example, if your business, if you have a business, for an example, I'm just making an example. 
and you say uvulang o five o'clock oxen, you open at five o'clock oxen, and this particular day, onga mama lang uvulang o six, mlang fi ngo five, ngo palile mlang ngo five. I take your word for it. Ngo ba we no provider makuin. Ngo fi ngo five, ngo tenga makuin ten thousand rand. Nya linda nya five to six kanto nuzo fi ngo six. You lose the greatest sale of the year because you can't keep your word. Because you're not as good as your word. They say black business. They say businesses fail on two things. They fail on two counts. They fail on ethos and they fail on administration. Sometimes you can have all the administration you want. But that's what they come back to you, they take your call, they give you what you want, but in the back of it's not coming for the right. They can have a good heart. They can have a good heart. Saturday, uh, Saturday, to be frank. And when you made at that time, so good heart without good administration doesn't help, and good administration without good heart doesn't help either. So you've got to deal with ethos. Can you see what I'm trying to get at? Can you see what I'm trying to do? So you've got to deal with ethos, ethical values, and how. And everybody has got to have around anything that you lead, anything that you do, you've got to define who you are in terms of ethical values. I'm doing this for this church. I'm doing ethical values for this church, ethos for this church. Which, who are we? How do we do business? What are the things that are within the parameters of scriptural provision for the New Testament? What are the things that are allowed and the things that are allowed? Now, for me, good thing again is an entry. We're not going to stay there. I'm going to go back to the verse we read last week again. First Timothy, First Corinthians chapter 5. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 5. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 5. I'm just, I'm just, just. Okay, let's read from verse 1. It's a sticky verse, but it says, chapter 5, verse 1, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. Such immorality is not even mentioned among the Gentiles. Now, all I need in that verse I need to work with is if there's the word among you. Everything else I'm, I'm going to explain. But what I want, I want to work with, among you. There's sexual immorality among you. And the question I want to ask later on, Masangana, into the, te the teaching, is that who comes to the church? Who's here? Who comes to the church? Who attends the church? What kind of people attend this church? So we're going to answer that and explain within the parameters of, of course, in this about, 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 about culture. But let's deal with the text. So number one, it says there's sexual morality among you that's not mentioned among the church. Let's deal with the principles of it. So, Obani Bible, um, the sexual immorality, there's a man that dates his stepmother. Stepmother, Obani Bible, your translation says, Obani Nisho John. Stepmother, the couple of translations says, so this young man was dating his stepmother. So, Mama Kama, Alisha Ongutu Baba Kusho Nile, either. Just a second. So, so this is what is going on in the church. Now, but the point I'm trying to make, that, that the point I'm trying to make, he says, that's the point I'm trying to make it. He said, Listen, just Kunamagunizin doesn't Zagalai, is Namanyala, is the West than Abantabanga called. To an intent that Abantabanga called must be the Sunday and Batsiela and the Sunday and Oban, the West name La Peson to him. So then, therefore, we want to we wanna make sure, we want to make sure that when you run church, Church is far better than Abantabanga called, so that most and Abantaban and King, you tell them, you say, Oh, you come to our church, you come, you also see Zagales on Twin Lake. So that now, Mamma, Mamma, Numtoa, now in Thomas and Oshopai, they can come to church and find people that can help a Lomtanga Tangi, like a Sunday, Oba, Lemon, 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 Jack yourself up. A church is a place where you've got to jack yourself up so that it's a place in terms of morality now. We are a cut above the rest. 
in terms of morality. We are a cut above the rest. It becomes important to us in terms of, in terms of being the hope and the light of the world. Remember, we, we, are a respons- we have a responsibility. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Let's go to Matthew 5. I'm going I'm to come back here. I'm going to come back here. First Corinthians. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. Maybe let's pick it up on verse 13. Let's pick it up on verse 13. Verse 13 says, Matthew chapter 5, the first, first, first book of the New Testament. Let's look at verse 13 very close. It says, you are, not will be, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but be thrown out in and trampled underfoot by men. Look at the next part. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. A city that is set on where? On a hill cannot be hidden. So the Bible, we are the salt of the what, what is the duty of a salt? You know what I'm saying? Salt, salt preserves. Do you know Biltong? Biltong, they put a, they, they take a, 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 a raw meat, but put a lot of salt and dry it up. Because the salt preserves. They put a lot of salt on the meat so that you don't spoil a lot of meat. So salt preserves. Salt preserves. So the Bible, this earth is preserved because of you and I. Hello? So I'm not going to do it for your sake. Then it agrees with what God said to Abraham. I'm not going to do it for your sake. Then it agrees with what God said to Abraham. I'm not going to do it for your sake. Then it agrees with what God said to Abraham. I'm not going to do it for your sake. Then it agrees with what God said to Abraham. I'm not going to do it for your sake. Then it agrees with what God said to Abraham. I'm not going to do it for your sake. Then it agrees with in the Bible, the word light and darkness refers to lifestyle. When the lifestyle is right, when the lifestyle is wrong, it's darkness. Little Bible, we are the light. We will not be the light. We be the light. Not will be. We be now the light. We are the light of the world. It says, you are, verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light, do they light a lamp and put it under a basket or but on a lampstand and gives light to all who are in the house, all in Katlehom. It gives light to all who are in Katlehom. Let your light so shine before men. Now, that's what Jesus says. Let your light shine before who? Before men. That word men, that doesn't mean males. It means before human being. So Jesus, in his, the, the person, the person that gave us this Christianity, he designed it in such a way, what he puts in me, he should shine before everybody else. My light must shine before everybody else. My light must shine before everybody else. Tell your neighbor, my light is shining before everybody else. So the question is that are we shining? You see, we need to answer that question. The question is that are we shining? Because it says before men, all men. So Jesus, I'm a man to be a man to be a man to be a man And maybe you're the nearest, you're the nearest version. You're not, you are the nearest thing. 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 You are We need to shine. So, then, by implication, without getting in detail about it, I'm, the, I'm building up my case. Without getting into detail about it, if Mokanya may look shine, abandoned by in darkness, which means the light is not the darkness and the dark, there's a division. There's a difference. There's a difference. What is darkness and what is light? Okay? So, I'm the light. I need to shine the light. Okay? I need to shine. How do I get the light? Because Jesus in me is the light of the world, is the light of life. Okay, when he comes into my life, he gives me the ability to shine. I'm a kama bantu bak pega gim ma befunu boni nchela ngobi nya ilaiti kanyi sinchela. Abantu ma befunu boni nchela mele ba pile ganja they must look at you. You are the pattern of how people should live their lives. So it's, ne, then that means don't take it badly. Now tell you nebunga itati gabilen don't fundi sanga ish. So we don't use Sunday uzo pumuli zono. We use Sunday uzo kati zono no tati light yako. So you don't come to church of Fukuzono. We come to church to learn the lessons of how to better to be the light to the world. You don't come to church just to the on or the Santa Nuzo phone to how can you be a better light to the world? Because it's the Bible, you are, not will be, you are the light of the world. No kind of words. 
So what do you use the light for? Use the light for Rutaban Mabe Funobon in there. Where they need to go. They need to look at me. They need to look at you. We are the awareness of the world. Now, Mama Kama, God places the responsibility on us for people to look at us for them to see the light. So Uba um crest to Uba ne responsibility. Uba um crest to Uba num toalo. You go to Angel Gwazo's Pilela when you want. You can't just live for yourself.